Good evening. We have another Division A set here this time. We've got a matchup in uh, Group 2. So my last cast was a Group 1 cast. Here we've got Group 2. So we've got the one seed in the group, Lo Neary. Here in the red and the purple and the red, we've got the captain of the team, Duke Thompson, playing as the Vietnamese here. Uh, Duke, I think, is about a 2K player on the sign-up. 2K 1v1 player. And he'll be teamed up with Roomba in the purple here, playing as the Magyars. Roomba is, uh, I think, the third member of the team coming in, let's say, something like 1750 1v1 ELO. So yeah, very solid team in the division. Uh, entry rating between these two players, uh, about 1850. Over on the other side, we have the three seed in the group, always housed. Fanith, the captain in the blue plane as the Portuguese. Uh, Fanith is, wait, I don't even recall now, maybe a 1700 player. And teamed up with Clemens, who I think is a 1600 player. Clemens here in the green playing as the Franks. And so their entry rating coming in about 16, 17. So a significant ELO disparity between these two teams. Although I should note that the ELO disparity is uh, not as great when you take into consideration the team. ELO. I think um, always house these guys have, are gonna be a stronger team than that entry rating might lead you to believe. Okay, so yeah, map here is Gold Rush. This is a Ooh, some nice HP taken off of Blue Scout there. Purple definitely getting the better of that engagement. And yeah, I'm guessing Blue must have come in to try to lame a boar. That's the only reason you'd have that much HP off. That boar. Of course, full HP, so maybe it was that boar. Yeah, missed, missed the lame attempt. Yes. I need to upgrade to pro so yes. I can rewind here. Um, yeah, okay, so this is a best of three first round in the group stage. It's a double elimination group stage, so the loser of this is not out of the tournament. Um, though they will be at risk for being out of the tournament in the following week. But yeah, this is a best of three. Uh, Low Neary would have choose, chosen the first category. Uh, Always House would then choose a map from that category. So I'm not sure, not sure exactly who chose this category. But this is Gold Rush from our open map category. Open map category consisting of Arabia and Gold Rush. So we will not see Arabia in this set. All right, so yeah, at the moment we've got only two on wood here, three on wood. Portuguese going to, to wood actually after the berries because of the wood bonus from the berries. And yeah, two on wood. So we're going to see feudal aggression all around here, I think. In the past, it wasn't totally uncommon to see FC attempts on Gold Rush, but the current 2v2 meta with these blazing fast up times, there's just, um, and you know, especially with the, the state of walls at the moment, state of houses, there's really, really hard to pull that off. All right, so yeah, we've got Loom coming in here for Clemens, our green player. So Franks will be going up with 18 pop scouts. Dude getting in some scouting. Yeah, very nice scouting there. And yeah, it looks like it'll be 19 pop from just about everyone else here, right? Yep. And yeah, very minimal idle time here. Magyar's player, actually. What happened here? Uh, 13 seconds. Must not have had enough food. Yeah, it looks like he had a force trap there for a second. Actually get 13 seconds of idle time, so about half a villager. So small mistake, but these kinds of things can add up, especially at this level. So purple doing a nice job though, dragging that villager out away from working for a little while. Yeah, this will be straight archers from both of our archers players. Uh, we're not gonna have not gonna be seeing any militia or men at arms here. Ooh, is Roomba gonna snipe a pig here? Gets the pig. Sends it to him. What a gentleman. What a gentleman, Roomba. Look at that. 
What a gentleman. Alright, so yeah, we've got the stable just about up here for our Franks player. Actually, we've got both of the low Neary scouts here, so they're looking to get some aggression in. Um, see if they can get a villager pick. Their scouts are separated right now. There aren't any straggler builds. So I think blue should be okay here. Ooh, red is housed. That's unfortunate timing for me. Imagine, yeah, red is. Oh, I'm getting harassed here by a scout as well. Ooh. Look at the blocking there by Roomba. Are you gonna get? Oh, the villain gets out. Nope. Oh, he gets it. Loses the scout, but that is a trade he will take all day long. Yeah, so low, low Neary taking a one vil lead after that second range coming down right now. Blue only with one range. And let's see, let's get back to our resource counts here. Yeah, Blue doesn't quite have the wood for, has the wood now for the second stable. Or pardon me, for the second range. All right, we are going to have earlier scouts. Nice use of the hill there by Fana, but he's going to have to run. Frank scouts coming in, they're going to try to harass these berries. Any spear in production? No, no spear in production yet. Roomba doesn't seem to have noticed. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Scouts, two scouts. And these are Magyar scouts. More HP on the Frank scouts, but uh, more attack here on the, the Magyar scouts. So purple should be fine. Duke Thompson investing pretty heavily in walls. Oh, I didn't see this big wood line. Could have maybe just slapped the house there. And you wall this. You've got a really, really nice base. But hard to scout that out. Duke Thompson almost loses his starting scout there to a spear. All right, moving out with the uh, archers here. Fletching's not in yet. Does he have a blacksmith? Blacksmith coming down right now. No spear in the mix, though, so he does have to be careful about being out in the open here. These three scouts could clean these without fletching. Did these scouts try to dive here? Yeah, the... Oh, look at this. Duke Thompson coming out for the berries right when the scouts are here. Yes. All right, fletching is now in yes. for blue here. Pauses, maybe some lag. Not sure what's going on exactly there. All right, we've got uh, Duke Thompson's archers and route here. Still no fletching. Fletching not on the way yet. A lot of green scouts. I think green could have a chance to get a really good clear here. Three scouts with the buff HP. Three more scouts. You got six scouts. Nice snipe there, though, by Roomba. Taking out a Wallingville. Green's got more than enough scouts to deal with this here. If these archers and scouts can link up, this is unfortunate here right now for Loneary. They're going to lose these archers. They're split up. Still no fletching. I think this might have been a mistake here by Red to go out. Although it doesn't lose any numbers yet. Still, though, they're going to be trapped. We've got fletching archers here, plus a spear. Purple can't even think about jumping on that. Loses a scout. Yeah, this arm is going to get cleared here. Oh, he's housed in a really nice spot right now. Those archers are toast. So now the military numbers are actually still favoring still favoring Low Neary here. These scouts actually get trapped in the woods here. Let's see what the follow-up. So now we've got archers moving towards Fanus base and some spears in the mix. I think if Duke had a had a spear or two in the mix with that initial group. Things might have gotten a lot cleaner, but yeah, glaring here. Definitely thinking about aggression now on the Vietnamese player. So low near, even though they took a bad trade, they're still even in military count, still even in vil count, and they've been the ones pressing the action here, the ones with the initiative thus far. This is a scary army though here. Especially if these archers get in the mix, they could clean the Red's army. Nice engagement there for Duke Thompson. A lot of HP off those scouts. Gotta be careful with these archers. It's a good archer mess here for blue. And now the high ground for always housed. Yeah, once again, Lone Erie is being cut off from their reinforcements. Basically dead even HP here right now. Look at that. Only a three HP difference between these two groups. Very, very even game so far.
few armies just dancing around each other. No action at the moment. Everyone is getting walled. We was still pretty exposed on this side, especially that gold. So red and purple are getting split up here, though. I, I This seems like a serious mistake. I'm not sure why they're doing this. I think maybe purple's looking for a way in, but they're gonna get... They're gonna get punished for this. They're gonna get seriously punished for this. That green with the plus one armor in as well. It's almost in for purple. That is a great engagement for Always Housed. Just not enough archers in this mass right now. This is a much better spot for Always Housed. Purple trying to keep the high ground there. Trying to get a little separation so these archers can get out of here. A lot of HP going down on these purple scouts. Yeah, look at that. Twice the HP now on the uh, Always Housed army. Look at this. Oh, there's a hole. There's a hole. Oh, brutal. Room is about to get smacked on that wood line. I mean, it's not a huge group. He'll be able to clean that without too much trouble, but that is going to be some idle time. We have some casualties. Okay. Look at that, though. Lonary actually getting out of that jam much better than I expected they would. One vill down. Roomba has not noticed yet. Two vills down. Nope, actually, that pull gets away. Notices now. Panic tower, so that's going to hurt his ego long term, especially when you're the cow player. You don't want to have to drop that tower. And let's see if this is going to distract him. Could be a good engagement, actually, for Always Housed. You've got green scouts are out of action. So they clear, clear the army. But look at that, that's actually given now a 3 ability to always housed in green. Able to click click up there, Roomba. Way further behind, it's produced more scouts. Only 16 farms versus 23. So Clemens here in a really, really strong spot. Another good engagement here for always housed. Military count is still identical, but there's going to be a huge tech advantage here for always housed. Both of them have clicked up. They'll both be in Castle Age before either of the Lonary players. There's always House guys playing their absolute hearts out. Slight HP advantage here for Always Housed. Let's see if they can jump on this and whittle down the numbers. They've got good scout numbers here. Plus one, plus one on all these scouts' bloodlines. Yeah, so advantage here for Lonary. Actually surprised there. Retreating back, I guess they're hoping for more of a defender's advantage, but might have been worth it to force the action there. Especially as Franks don't get bloodlines, they can only go up to 54 HP as opposed to 65. And now this is serious pressure. All right, the build count is close. We got to add a couple bills for the fact that. Uh, Green and blue will be up a, a bit earlier here. Could be a chance to trap. Although, yeah, you got to think when they when they see them hit Castle Age, they're going to jump on this immediately. They don't want this to become Expo. All right, Expo, 25 seconds. Bodkin, 25 seconds. Can they jump on this army before that tech is in? Actually, they're not even going to try it. They're just going to track. They're just going to track. Plus two armor, almost in on these Frank scouts. Like have upgrade on the way. A lot of farms expiring. Yeah, I don't know why Green took that fight. That was a strange one. Yeah, he might have been busy microing at home, but or macroing at home. The blue gets some payback. This game is so close, so close. Look at that blue already coming out to the middle. Yeah, and that's what the initiative can buy you when you're forcing them to chase your armies. Ooh, though this blue army is going to get caught out in the open. Yeah, this could be really good for Loneary here if they can trap this army. Plus two's in. Light cab upgrade is in. 
jump on that. Yeah, the scouts fell back, I think, to try to protect this, uh, you see here. The archer's gonna die. That seems like a mistake to me. This should be a clean. Listic's 20 seconds out. Ooh, it's in now for blue, though. Leap the balls. Yeah, that is a nice clean there. Green, light cab, just a little bit too late here. That is a great fight for Lonery. Yeah, they've got the military advantage now, but still both of them on one TC. And we have now have a presence in the middle here for Faneth. He's going to have clean access to gold. Two TCs here for our Franks player up on 24 farms versus only 17 for his Magyar's counterpart. Yeah, I think I like always house position a bit better here. I mean, low Neary, they have a military edge, but... Looks like a good fight for blue. He's got high ground, ballistic. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so military count evened out, but the vill count, about 10 vills in always house favor. And they're now fighting with this, this high ground. Let's see, anyone on stone or Vietnamese player? A red player here on stone slightly, I think, wants to make that rat and switch. Probably going to try to get a castle up here. These are very exposed. If Always House is able to get some pressure on that, which that's the way they're heading now, that could be that could be big, big trouble here. Yeah, this is a great play by Always Housed. And this army's not going to try to support that. They're going to counterattack. This, this could be... Yeah, this is going to be a disaster. Lonery. This might be the game right here. Yeah, 20 bill lead, tons of bills going down. This is game. Wow. Oh my gosh, that is a disaster. An absolute disaster for Duke Thompson. It's a score, though. It's crazy how close the score is. Despite this kind of punishment. I mean, look at look at the bill numbers. Decent counterattack, forcing a tower. They are getting a lot of bills here. They're just not the same kind of damage. I mean, look at this. Yeah, Duke's dead. Duke is dead. He has a higher score than green somehow, but he is dead. Look at this stuff. Purple knights all over the place. Holes in the wood lines. But look at the bill difference. 66 to 110. <laughs> I mean, Duke has... Four villagers alive. Yeah, surely we see the GG here. I don't know. They think maybe they're thinking they're still seeing that score how close it is. Shockingly close for the kind of damage they're taking here. Three villagers. Wow. <laughs> it's just devastating. I mean, yeah, Blue's not in a great spot here, but still is 44 bills. There's, there's just no chance here for Lonier. I mean, they might also just be so surprised at this point with a uh, hole in the wall here. Some kills on the wood line. Duke Thompson not giving up, though. He's going to stay in the fight. And again, they're seeing that score, and they must be thinking... Ecos can't be very good here for Faneth and Clemens. Oh my goodness, look at this though. Green Knights all over the place in purple space. Yeah, this is unrecoverable twice. Twice the bill count here. GG is called. What a wild game. So close. This game was so close. And it really just came down to where they decided to move their armies. It's really all it came down to there. It's really the only the crucial difference. I mean, the hole in the wall here where the archers, the four archers were able to get in on Roomba. I think that was costly, set back the castle age time. I think Roomba may be overinvested in scouts. Base have set back the time, but honestly, the the castle age timing wasn't. I don't know, it didn't seem like the decisive difference. I think the biggest difference was just 
You had always housed with a big army on top of this hill. They made the movement here, in this generation here, with the mineral deposits. That is, uh, that's rough. That's real rough if you're Duke. Take a look at the stats here. All right. Well, with that, we go to game number two. Valley. So 1-0 lead for always housed. Underdogs performing incredibly well in game one. Really, really clean builds. Excellent unit control. Um, and in fact, I think... Um, yeah, I think... Oh, gosh. Why are these trees... Massive. Okay, this is. Give me a second here. I gotta make sure these mods are not showing up in capture here for some reason. Weird. It's enabled. Well, we'll cast. We don't need to micro bills. I can't even see behind this tree. Hopefully, we'll be able to track the armies okay with the giant tree song. All right. So, Valley, this is one of our. This is from the semi open category, I believe. Yeah. Semi open only because it's a lot more wallable than your uh, standard Arabia. Get a lot of wood lines here. Uh, but it does generally tend to play out uh, pretty pretty aggressively. Uh, yeah, look at this map. Look how wallable this one is. That's really great. I mean, another reason to play it aggressively is if you do try to wall up, your opponent can take advantage freely of a crazy amount of food that's located in the riverbed. You've got the, the shore fish in the hunt, right? So you drop a mill here. Now you've got eight deer, three shore fish to take in a really close area. Be curious to see how players utilize that. Um, yeah, I'm actually not sure what the optimal strategy is myself. Seems really risky to be out there during feudal age, but I suppose if you take a good fight early, you could maybe transition out there, or maybe we'll see players try to hit the riverbed during dark age. Okay, let's take a look at our sieves this time. So always housed, we've got Clemens again playing the Cavril. Here is the Khmer, already being scouted out by Duke Thompson. So similar matchup, green, up against Red Duke, again playing the Archer role with Britons. Yeah, Clemens Khmer teamed up with Fanith as the Chinese here. And over the other side for Loniri, Roomba, again in the purple, playing as the Spanish. And paired up with Britons. Okay, so maybe they are thinking of trying to wall up. It might be a little... I, I think they probably would have hoped to have the Spanish player on a map like this. This is super wallable. Yeah, two gold, two stone deposits all tucked in inside that tree radius. Yeah, I, I guess Red was probably coming forward for the lane. That had to be the reason he went so aggressive there. But look at this blue pushing deer all the way from the riverbed. Yeah, so you don't have any deer spawn close to you, so... Um, I guess nowadays with the modern Arabia generation, the deer spawn about that far. Anyway, so nothing that unusual about pushing deer from the riverbed. Thirty seconds idle time from Chinese, that's to be expected, but fourteen seconds idle time here from Green from Clemens. With Khmer, so must have been a little bit of a mistake somewhere in the build order. Wasn't watching close enough to see if he got housed or whatnot. Yeah, two to wood here. Yes. Yeah, looking like feudal aggression on that side. Actually, only two to wood here for our Spanish player. Are they gonna go? Yeah, I mean they're gonna open open scouts archers here. Low near very well, but yeah, be curious.
curious to see how they try to transition to Kong. Which I have to think they're going to plan to do. But Spanish scouts, they're, they're strong these days because it's so easy to get bloodlines. All right, Roomba coming out. So it's going to mill the middle before milling the berries. Actually dropping out barracks already. I'm going to get a drush here. No, clicks up. Just using that as a second. No, not as a second building. Already has a lumber camp. Monday? Not milling this. Interesting. So why not go with the mill as the second building? I guess it was just a timing issue. Needed the second building quickly before the bills would have been there. So that must be the reason for dropping the barracks. So yeah, I'll drop a mill here soon, and then I'll have the wood to uh, still get the stable. Ain't futile. All right, 18 pop. Britain archers, 19 pop. Spanish scouts, 22 pop. Chinese archers. Oh man, Chinese eco. They may have been nerfed, but they're still so sweet. Yeah, extra bills, and then 18 pops, scouts for Mark and Airplane here. Green boots roll. Purple, the only one opting to uh, mill that middle area. I'd be curious to see if he pulls back or if he stays out there. Yeah, it makes me nervous just, just seeing bills out in the open that close. Blue here. 1-2 range immediately coming down here for Duke. Stable coming down immediately for Arkham Air Player. And yeah, this is about to be scouted out here by Fanith. He's going to see the bills. He's going to start licking his chops. Actually snipes the scout there. Missed that. How did he have such little HP on the scout? Maybe he tried to lame this game. I I was looking over on this side, so I missed it. Interesting. Still leaving these bills out here. Alright, Archer's already moving out. Fletching on the way, yes, yeah, so this time Duke Thompson's going to have Fletching right off the rip. Again, though, I'm surprised he's not adding a spear when he's up against the cow player there. Oh, yeah, much better play than me. He knows better. Purple. Brave here, man. He's got two scouts. He's got archers coming in, man. Oh, it's making me nervous. The tower's not going to be up in time. Always house smells blood here. Ah, oh, this, this is this is killing me. It's killing me. Might be literally killing Roomba here in a second. Yeah, that's gonna be one vill down to start. Power will go up. And there was no fletching on those archers, so eh, I mean not the worst trade. You do whittle down army numbers. Lose a vill. Yeah, but a four vill lead for always house between the Chinese bonus and uh, that engagement there. All right, here comes uh, Duke with his archers trying to join up with these scouts, and they're going to try to put pressure here on Fanith. They are spotted by Clemens. Roomba actually opting to move out and yeah, I don't know if we want to get separated here. Green again with a scout numbers advantage. Six scouts versus four. We're looking at 11 red archers to only four blue archers. I promise these archers are so far from uh, their reinforcements. No armor on these scouts. That should be a good trade if you are low near here. Excellent trade. Really excellent trade for Lonary. 14 to 6 military advantage. 
only down by two vills at this point. And yeah, again, surprise not adding a spear when you're up against the cat player. Clemens playing this looks to me somewhat similar to game one where he's going. I'm not gonna go super heavy on the cap production, staying only one stable. Yeah, forced to drop a defensive tower. Let's see if Duke can jump on that in time. I don't think there's a lot of builds on that. That tower will go up. Where I hate the big trees, I can't see what's going on. They do look kind of cool, but boy, you can't see a thing. Ah, uh, Khmer. Doing Khmer things, jumping in houses. It is some idle time on the eco, though. Yeah, and here, this game, Roomba with the food advantage. So yeah, Loneary looking in a good spot. Roomba is housed here briefly. Still no arm on those scouts. There's great pressure here by Duke. A lot of, a lot of idle time there for Khmer. Archer's coming over. Now they're going to try to pinch this army. Armor, 10 seconds out. Bloodlines is in. This should be a clean. Yeah, this should be a... Oniri in a great spot here. Still down two vills, so Clemens did a fantastic job keeping the vills alive. At idle time, but not too many casualties. Pressure coming back in his face. Blue sent an over another group of reinforcements. Purple working on walling behind this. Hasn't gone to stone yet, so we're not going to see a really early con transition. Still a vill lead for Ois House despite all of this. And look at that. Clemens actually with more food in the bank at the moment than, uh, than Roomba. Investing in bloodlines here. 30 seconds out. These houses by so much time if you're Khmer. And this could be a pinch here. Green's got good scout numbers. He really wants to wait for bloodlines before he jumps on this stuff. Yeah, and I'm not sure where did Duke's archers go? Why are there only six archers here? I guess some of them must have been clean in that last engagement. But yeah, now this. It ended up being a good fight for Always House. These reinforcements got separated. If, if a Loneary can find a way to get back to those reinforcements, it could take a good fight here. But yeah, these two armies are split up now, and this is not what you want. Okay, actually, they're going to jump in, get the surround. All of a sudden, looking like a great fight for Loneary. Can't see a damn thing. Yeah, so they're just trading off archers here. Advantage still for Loneary. I think you're pretty happy with that, though, if you're Clemens. That pressure is out of your face. Archers are gone, except for two of them. All right, but look at this. Uh, Duke Thompson clicking up. Thing has only eight archers, so that's going to be a smaller expo mass, a lot less scary. Ooh, losing more archers here. Another bad engagement for always housed. And, uh, yeah, Roomba, though, uh, only has one villain gold. A little late going to gold. Could have clicked up. They have a market. He buy his way up. He's dropping one now. Realizes the mistake. The red sending his archers back. I think wants to wait to Castle Age. It wants to wait for the Castle Age upgrades. And there it is, purple's clicked up. Clemens does have 24 farms somehow, despite all that pressure. You've got Khmer, so that's ratcheting up. Favor Loneary's position, though. Definitely in a good spot. They're going to have significant tech advantage here. Expo upgrade. Yeah, the problem is, uh, 
He doesn't have food right now. Right, he's going, going for fast ballistics. Bodkin. Expo on the way. Yeah, so it looks like uh, always how they want to regroup on this hill. We've got one, two, three archery ranges. I mean, it's two archery ranges. advantage and yeah it's gonna gonna survive just fine until expo and bodkin ballistics 50 seconds of ballistics is infrared here and with the britain's range Duke with a lot less numbers but any micro is way back in here wow military numbers are even and the thing is, again, Duke is separated from his reinforcements here. Second TC coming down for our Britons player. Doing a nice job keeping this hill, buying time, trying to get these reinforcements here. Let's see if they can get there in time. Ballistics is in for Blue, so Blue's going to try to take this fight now. Little Purple Knight's running in to bail him out. Should be able to link up the reinforcements here. Still slightly favor Loniri's position. Not on stone, so I'm gonna stick with the uh, standard meta play. Should be a good fight for Loniri. It was nice micro that I always housed. I think they made the most of that engagement. Both of our cap players still on one TC. Ooh, I, yeah, Roomba losing a lot of HP for free there. Yay. 16 archers there. We've got 17 archers there. Still haven't seen any knights yet from our mayor player. Okay, there's our first one. A lot of light scouts here, though. Very close game once again. 103 to 103 villagers. Military count very close. Duke producing out only two ranges where we've got three here for our Chinese player. Yeah, let's see the uh, the micro here. I think that's what's going to come down to. These numbers are very, very close. Upgrades are very, very close. Actually, red with no archer armor. First archer armor now coming in for blue actually cancels it. Still the one TC play from both of our cap players. And again, it's a lot like game one. Actually, uh, Loniri allowing this army to bypass them and to head toward uh, Roomba's base. It could be good for Loniri. They could get a trap on the other end. This army's going to be in here real quick. Could cause some serious damage to Roomba's eco. He's only one TC, so he doesn't have places to hide these vills. I can build the wall that out in time. It's gonna be good for Loniri, it's gonna be bad. Ah, oh, these archers, they're still, still so far behind. Oh, I just don't know, and these light cap moves so quick. With only one TC to hide in. Idle time. So far, Boys Housed hasn't taken damage with this military. Ruba going for the trap. Still a little bit room for escape here. Third TC coming down here for blue. Second TC for green. Boys Housed actually with the military lead. 
Surely they get trapped in here, right? Surely. Nowhere to run. Leave that house. No. Always house making the most out of this, though. Eco's a mess right now here for Roomba. I think they've taken the best fight they can using the, the hill well. Yeah, yeah, that army's being cleaned. Military count now catching up for Loneary. But reinforcements here for Blue's gonna try to head over to Red. Please be no hole in the wall. Ooh, he's still open in the back. <gasps> Ready. Oh, disaster. Oh, disaster. You hate to see it. They're lower military, but they're controlling the initiative, getting the raids in. This is a sick, sick counterattack. Overchops, man. Overchops. And yeah, reminiscent of game one. Knights strewn throughout Duke Thompson's face. And I don't think he's going to drop to three bills. Here, look, he was trying to fast imp. And now, he's going to be a much worse position when he gets up there. It's going to be hard for him to get the upgrades he's going to need to get really serious damage in. Yeah, that's one, one house there that could have made. Huge difference. Look at this. 30 of those behind. Just like game one, man. The game is dead, dead even. And just the smallest thing immediately snowballs. Knights continue to strew in. 40 villa advantage now for always housed. And this one is looking over much in the way game one looked over. It's a good engagement here for though for Duke. It's gonna be some dead bills, deletes the castle. Purple Knights coming to the rescue, but uh too late up here. Wow, the underdogs playing a hell of a game here. Hell of a set. Purple will clear that, but. Red now hitting with only 22 archers, only 42 bills. And the hopes. Fast and arbalist to kill green. Those hopes are looking pretty bleak at the moment. I'm just gonna try to drop a really aggressive castle here. Red has to think better of it. Green with a significant military advantage here. Red's gonna try to come in and help, but he has such, such few archers. These aren't really gonna get that much value. It does have the uh, final attack upgrade. No chemistry yet. No arbalist yet. Another attack coming in here. Duke's toast. Yeah, this is... This is probably the nail in the coffin here, that raid. It was a nice clean. Purple should clean that. A lot of... A lot of vills out here in the open. This is... This is just too much damage. Too much damage. Very nice micro there by Fanith. those night numbers. 50 bill advantage right now. Military count is identical. That castle will go up, but it's going to get tripped down. Who's on the way to imp? Purple. Can't even sniff imp. Only 19 bills on food right now. Go not super balanced either. Just now adding a second town center. Yeah, this has been an aggressive, messy, messy game. Should be some easy picking here, though, for Duke. Get a lot of bills for free there. But even with that, we're still looking at a 40 villager advantage right now for uh, Always Housed. A good spot. And look at that. Cavalier is in now for the Khmer player. Still running around Duke Zico. 
just added a second range. But continuing to be completely idled at all. Archers could get some good damage in here. The thing is, those Cavalier could come back and clear this, no problem. Only looking at 22 Expo there. Still no counter stream. Still no Arbalist. Though. Yeah, here come the Cavalier. This will be cleaned. Once that's cleaned, sure seems like Duke's basically out of this game. We have no way to really produce significant numbers. There it is. GG's called. He knows it. He knows once that army's gone, it's all she wrote. Wow. Always housed. Sweeping the set. Significant underdogs with a 2 0 victory versus. Low Neary, so always housed. Will um, head over to the uh, the winners bracket. Actually, will be facing my team in the in the next week. The winner of that set will advance to the playoffs. The loser will play an elimination set in week three. Low Neary will advance to play. Let's see, in the losers bracket against um, Noobs for Life. The loser of that game. Uh, pardon me, loser of that set will be out of the tournament, and the winner will play in the elimination match in uh, in week three. So congratulations to Always House, to Clemens and Fanef. Incredible performance. Um, but yeah, although it had very bloody endings to these games, um, it was certainly not a, they were not one-sided matches. These games were neck and neck. Basically until the moment it was over. Um, it was even military numbers, even Ville numbers. Uh, back and forth pressure from these two, two teams. And then it was just small things that sort of snowballed out of control. Game one was kind of just a movement decision. Game two, I mean, I actually thought when Clemens and Fanith dove here, I thought that was going to be catastrophic for them. I thought... They were going to lose their whole army, but by the time they got clean, they had so many reinforcements moving in on Duke and then having that hole in the wood line. That was just that was game over. All right. Much like game one, Cav players with a positive KD, Archer players with a negative KD. Actually, Duke not that far behind Fanith in terms of KD. I thought it would be worse than that, but quite far behind economically, especially after that damage. Mare, smooth eco, as always. All right, well, that will do it for this set. Uh, sorry for the uh, very low volume of my voice. I've got uh, family here sleeping at home and uh, try not to wake anyone up. But uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the cast and yeah, look forward to casting some of the other divisions in. Uh, yeah, I think the next few casts, I'll try to do stuff outside of Division A, try to do some Division B, and uh, and C. All right, catch you guys later.